Hello, and welcome to Perkins 5 News. Today we will be discussing the temperate deciduous forest, finding out what it is like, what you need to take, so you don't have to. Hello, my name is Alex. I'm the host and geographer. The temperate deciduous forest is found in eastern North America, western Europe, parts of China, Korea, and Japan. The land these forests sit on is typically flat and hilly or slightly mountainous. Also, the land is very fertile because there is a new layer of leaves every fall. There is a huge variety of trees in the forest. Let's go talk to our botanist, Connor, for more information. Thanks, Alex. I hate my job. My boss hates me. That's why he put me on this incredibly long list of letters and words and sentences because you know what, why not? I have to tell you about the kinds of trees in the temperate forest. These include black walnut, butternut, locust, ash, red maple, dogwood, sassafras, scarlet oak, sugar maple, sumrac, oak, beech, larch, elm, hickory, sycamore, poplar, birch, tulip tree, and willow. <sighs> There are also many kinds of smaller plants like ragweed, foxtail, becker's tick, hairy vetch, smartweed, yellow nut sage, wild sweet pea, lespedza, tick clover, black medic, and dandelions. Some of the plants, however, may cause allergies like ragweed, poison ivy. Also, some of these plants include invasive such as dandelions. <laughs> This huge variety of plants makes for amazing scenery during activities such as hiking, fishing, hunting, swimming, biking, and ultimate frisbee. Now that we have learned about the plants that can be found in the temperate deciduous forest, let's learn about the animals. There's a wide variety of animals that can, be, that can live in this biome as well as plants. You can find a lot of different species from large cats to rabbits and squirrels. Let's go to our zoologist, Goomer. Thanks, Jim. Hello, my name is Guma, and this is Peeking with Perkins. This is the part of the show where we take a look at all the animals in the forest, the temperate deciduous forest. First, let's talk about the Bob White Quail, famous for their Mariah, King, Mariah Carey singing like abilities. <laughs> These birds have superb singing and hearing abilities. Once a quail senses an approaching enemy, it instantly warns its companions of the intruder with a very nice hide. These birds flourish in the Midwest, most notably in Michigan where the ragweed, yellow nut sedge, wild sweet pea, black medic. That's right, these are vegetarians, or like we like to call them in the animal kingdom, herbivores. Next on our list is the tiny owls. These are nocturnal omnivores, so when it comes to hunting, they're most likely found waiting on the perch, waiting patiently on a perch, watching and listening to the slightest noise or movement to attack their victim. After detecting the prey, the tiny owl hovers above it, flapping its wings for the right moment to swoop down and stomp on it. They are ambush predators, so naturally they ambush. So while the victim is stunned, the tiny owl kills it immediately with its powerful claws. They eat mice and voles, which are like moles, but they're a lot smaller. Next on our list is the white-tailed deer. These deers are extremely cautious and wary animals because there are highly developed senses of sight, smell, and hearing due to generations of adapting to avoid predators. So. If ever seriously frightened, the, the white-tailed deer often utter a loud snorting call and quickly run away while raising their tail upwards like a flag. So naturally, that's why they were given the name white-tailed deer. White-tailed deer often eat, are often called browsers, meaning they eat primarily young twigs, shrubs, grasses, and mushrooms. So, you know, they're cool. Next is the very saddest one, the American burying beetle. It used to be found all over the states of the Rocky and in some of the southwest, southeastern Canada. Today, the only eastern state of Rhode Island. So sad, just Rhode Island. Now, some might say that beetles are totally gross and not useful, and to those people, I say nay. These precious beetles are now becoming rare and extinct, and almost to the point of where, if you find one, you get paid. Due to deforestation by those pesky humans, <sighs> just squashing them and just the American, bur uh, the American burring beetle has a diet of decaying meat. That's right, they're zombies. Nah, I'm just kidding with you. They're carrion, or as most people call them, decomposers. 
So, when the carcass dies, they immediately just eat off all the meat, allowing the nutrients to be absorbed. And so, I like to conclude with all our situations with what we've talked about. It's really interesting and all that jazz, so... Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh! 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 Thank you, Gilmer. There are many beautiful creatures in the temperate deciduous forest. Many more than mentioned here. Now, let's talk about the climate. The temperate deciduous forest has a, has a mild climate. It's hot in the summer and cold in the winter. Let's go talk to our meteorologist. Evan? Thanks, Alex. Now that I think about it, why is it called meteorology when we don't even study meteors? Ha ha! Hee hee! Ha ha! This is just me talking about climates and weather. Now back to business. The climate in the temperate deciduous forest is about the same every year. It has four seasons that cycle every year. Summer, fall, winter, and spring. In the summer, it is basically hot and humid with an average temperature of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. In the fall, the leaves on trees start to change color for the winter. In the winter time, the area is covered in a fine layer of snow and the average temperature is about 25 degrees Fahrenheit. The yearly average of the biome is about negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit to 90 degrees. The average temperature is about 50 degrees. Because of the seasonal changes, you need different types of clothes to survive. In the summertime, it's very hot, so you would mainly need a pair of shorts, a t-shirt, sunglasses, possibly a hat, tennis shoes or flip-flops, and for swimming, you would obviously need a bathing suit. Oh, never forget your phone in case you get lost. And finally for the winter, since it is, it's a lot colder than the summer, you need heavier clothes. These clothes are large coat, jeans, snow pants, hat or beanie, gloves, boots, sweaters, and under armor. Activities that can be played during the summer are soccer, football, baseball, swimming, cricket, Bocce ball, lawn darts, cornhole, fishing, bowling, tennis, pickleball, and water gun fights! <laughs> and the activities that can be played during the winter is sledding, snowboarding, skiing, and snowball fights! Oh my eye! Thank you for my time. This is meteorologist Evan. Back to you, Alex. Thank you, Evan. So, today we learned that if you want to go to the temperate deciduous forest in the summertime, you need to pack for warm weather and a pair of hiking boots. In the wintertime, pack for cold weather and snow. This concludes our broadcast today. Thank you for joining us at Perkins 5 News. Ragweed. Flash to it's not working. <laughs> it's so uh, <laughs> you want me to stand by it? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Alex. <clears throat> that they start having a very good time and doing all this. You hear me now? Yeah. 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 From what we're looking at, we're looking at a wild bunny. This bunny can grow to be several feet tall. Let's go poke it with a stick. Get a stick. I'm Guma, and this is in the wild. We're gonna go puss with the bunny. And so, I'm gonna do the most dangerous thing on earth. I'm gonna shoot it with a stick. Hopefully, I won't get killed. Yeah, I probably won't get killed. Let's do this. <laughs> As you can see, in the native habitat, they're very, very cautious, looking around for everybody. It's what's me. Time to go stealth mode. Oh, look at his hind legs. It's starting to kick up. We must go faster, or else we might lose it. Oh, it sees me. It sees me. It's not moving. That's a good sign. Oh, oh, oh. Stay back. Stay back. It's going to get angry. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, oh. In the wild. This up there is a dangerous bunny. You may have seen of a Monty Python in the Holy Grail. This beast can kill a man with a single hole. I'm gonna go poke it with a stick. 
Close enough. <laughs> No. <laughs> I was ready. 